So patients with early stage non-small cell lung cancer with no nodal or systemic spread are selected for the thoracic stereotactic body radiotherapy at PMH. Also selected patients with a limited number of lung mets from non-lung primary cancers who have disease control may also be considered for this treatment technique. Typical prescriptions we use here at Princess Margaret could be 60 gray in 8 fractions, 54 gray in 3 fractions, 48 in 4 or 60 in 3. SBR treatments began initially using a conformal technique with static beams and then several years later we transitioned to an IMRT technique and today currently we're now using VMAT to treat all our SBRT patients. Using VMAT and this improvement in our technology has allowed patient treatment times to reduce from approximately 30 minutes to about 15 minutes, which is a huge asset to the patient and the time they spend on the treatment couch. One other thing the patients undergo prior to treatment at their CT scan is assessment of their breathing motion. And for tumor excursion over a centimeter, we will use abdominal compression to reduce the movement of the tumor to less than one centimeter. If the patient already has motion under a centimeter, then no compression is required. So here we have an example case of a patient that's coming for treatment, um, for stereotactic body radiation treatment. And just a bit of a background, so patients are scanned supine with arms above their head. In this video you can see the patient is positioned on a vat clock bag, which um, we did use for a number of years, but today we've transitioned and our patients are now scanned and treated using a medtech board. We did look at the difference in accuracy between patient comfort and stability between using the VAC log and the MedTech, and we switched to the MedTech board as we found patient position was more stable and patient comfort a much higher level. So here we can see the therapist just setting the patient up, straightening and leveling using our four localization tattoos. The tattoos that we would use would be an anterior setup, a soup or an inf straightening tattoo, and two laterals in either of the soup or the inf plane, whichever is the most stable of the two. So the therapists are aligning the patients to the lasers using these tattoos, as you can see in the video. So once the patient is level and straight, the therapist will perform the planned shifts as indicated in the treatment planning system. And they'll ver verify relevant data on the patient. So things like the patient's depth, the resultant isocenter location in comparison to the treatment plan, etc. So the patient is set up and ready for treatment and the therapists are now just verifying the relevant information for this setup. And what you can see the therapist doing now is preparing the equipment for comb beam CT imaging. The gantry will start underneath the patient and a comb beam will be acquired through 360 degrees rotation around the patient. So we'll move on to comb beam CT acquisition and assessment. The therapists are acquiring the comb beam now, which is sped up for the purpose of this video, but typically takes about one to two minutes. Previously, when we started treating our stereotactic patients, we would acquire anything from three to five comb beam images in one treatment session. So three scans were always acquired, pre and intra and an end scan. And then depending on the results of the comb beam CT matching, if the ISO shift was required, then a verification scan would be done also for the pre and intra, which would equal a total of five comb beam CT images. 
Several years later, after looking at this data and reducing treatment time, we're now able to treat our SPRT lung patients just using the pre beam CT scan. So in other words, we've eliminated our intra-scan. The shifts are still performed based on the image registration and a verification scan will still be acquired if the shifts are three millimeters or greater. Image assessment is performed by the radiation therapist and typically a doctor will be present on day one or if there are any issues that arise on the other treatment days. So here we can just see um, a picture of the patient's treatment plan and the beam overlay um, that has been planned for this patient. Here one of our therapists is performing the image registration which primarily consists of the primary data set which is our CT scan in exhale as you can see here and this is overlaid with the resultant secondary data set which is our free breathing home beam CT. In this picture we're just looking at the CT scan, we're looking at the tumour itself and we can see the ITV circled in red and the PTV circled in green. The therapist will perform the image registration using a green purple colour display. Green is the cone beam CT scan, in other words our secondary data set, and purple is the primary data set which is our CT scan. And by overlaying these two data sets, we're able to perform an, a variety of image registrations, which we'll run through now. So we have a three-step matching protocol for our lung SBRT patients. First, we do an automatic registration using bony anatomy, mainly to ensure that no geographical error has occurred and to identify any patient rotation. And we can see the staff have performed this match. Second, we'll switch back to our grey colour mode and we will overlay the contours from our primary data set which is ITV in red, PTV in green and we will perform a manual adjustment to match the ITV to the tumour itself ensuring that all of the tumour is within the PTV. Again, it's important the therapist scroll through all slices in all three planes to ensure that the full volume is accounted for in our image registration. And the third part of our image registration is a verification stage. So we will turn on any applicable organs at risk or isodose lines in order to provide the RTs and the doctors with the most accurate assessment of the patient setup. The organs at risk and the isodose lines are sent down from the planning data set to the treatment units and these are determined on a patient by patient basis. For image registration, both rotation and translational errors are assessed. Translational errors will be corrected using the automatic couch shift function. In this video, we were using the manual sh couch shift function and you can here see the therapist entering the room to make those adjustments. Today we're able to make these adjustments from outside the room which saves us some time as we don't have to re-enter the room. For rotational error, we have a protocol where three degrees of rotation or under is accepted. If the rotation is greater than three degrees, then we will reposition the patient and retake the cone beam scans and perform image registration again. Here the therapists are requiring their verification scan to make sure the image registration is accurate and the shifts that were performed are also accurate. So in this video, treatment delivery uses the IMRT technique and this includes seven coplanar beams followed by two non-coplanar beams. Treatment setup and delivery an image acquisition and assessment would have taken about 20 to 30 minutes for this patient. But today, using VMAT, treatment delivery consists of two arcs, a full arc at couch zero and a partial non-coplanar arc. And so using the VMAT technology, treatments have now typically been reduced to about 15 minutes, which is a huge benefit to our patients. So here the therapists are treating the first part, the seven coplanar beams, and so following the seven coplanar beams, an intrafraction scan will be acquired as is being shown in this video. Once they've acquired their intra-scan, they will go through the image registration again and the assessment 
and perform the same match that we reviewed before. So they're looking to see that the tumour falls within the ITV and the PTV and that there are no significant changes from the beginning of treatment to the middle of treatment. And for this patient, they're scrolling through all the images and all three planes and the match looks, looks very, very good. So here in the video, we can see the therapist now getting ready to do the non-coplanar treatments and the couch will be rotated to 90 degrees or 270 degrees depending on the location of the patient's disease. So the therapist exit the treatment room and the two non-coplanar beams are delivered to the patient. And then here at the end of treatment, you're seeing the end cone beam CT being acquired. And today we do continue to acquire the end scan post-treatment delivery, and we use this data for research purposes. Thank you.